don't go away. On today's episode of Doggy Dilemmas, Jack and I take a field trip. Denise Mazzola is a certified professional dog trainer with over 20 years experience training dogs and people. If you've got a doggy dilemma, Denise can help. Welcome to another episode of Doggy Dilemmas. I'm Denise Mazzola. Today, we're going to take Jack on a field trip. If you've been watching the show for the last couple weeks, you've noticed that Jack doesn't like big trucks, so we'll work with him now. We've been working in the house on a lot of very common behaviors that dogs need to learn to be good citizens and to be good housemates in the house. But what's the point of doing all those behaviors if we can't take our dogs out and enjoy them out in public? So, so that's what today is going to be all about. So this is the way Jack travels in my car in a crate. In a crate. Um, and he's learning to wait in the crate. So I'm going to open the door. I'm going to put on his gentle leader and we're going to get started. His command is wait. Wait. If he starts to charge out, I'm going to close the door. Wait, good boy. And I'm also going to start to reinforce him a little bit. We're waiting. Good boy, wait. Now the gentle leader gives me control of his head. He's a terrible puller without it. And the family is not interested in getting rid of the gentle leader. So we've been using it on all of our field trips. Wait. Wait. I should be able to step to the side. Ah, ah, ah. Wait. Good boy, I'm going to block him with my body if, if he decides to come out before I'm ready. Wait. Release. Good boy. All right. So that's not only impulse control, but it's also for safety. You do not want to open your car door, your crate door, or your house door and have your dog charge out. They need impulse control. They need to wait and wait for your command to say, okay, you can come out now. Jack. Good boy. Good boy, Jack. Lie. Yes, good boy. Good boy. So as I, as I was saying, Jack has not been fed today. Lie. Good boy. We're gonna apply all the basic manners he's been learning and we've been showing you in real life. So today we're just gonna go for a stroll. Jack, sit. Just for my obedience training, Jack works on my left side. Sit, good boy. Ooh. Jack does have a bum leg on the back. His leg is a little sore, so he may choose to lie down more than sit, but that's all right. Okay, Jack. So as we walk, now see how he's getting a little in front of me? I really don't like that. So I can body block him back. He's very distractible. There's trucks going on. He's going to look at that weight. So I'm giving him that same weight command and I'm going to body block him. Okay, let's go. Wait. And if he doesn't, I body block him back. Good boy. Now I also need to give him some information on what I want him to do. Jack, good boy. Yes, so if he's next to me, he gets a click and a treat. Jack. Yes, he looks at me. Good boy. Remember, if your dog is looking at you when you're walking, sit. Good boy. If he's looking at you when you're walking, he's not going to look at the trucks, the cars, the other dogs or people. Good boy. Okay. Gentle. Good boy. Wait. Yes. Good boy. Jack, lie. Lie. Yes, good boy. So that was just on the verbal command. We've been working on that. It's very hard to do it outside. The distractions are intense. You can also think of them as distractions. Come here, Jack. No. So there's some impulse control that's not in place yet. You can think of when you work outside that there are distractions. I like to think of them as more motivating than me if they are serving as distractions. Good boy. 
So if he's interested in something else, I need to up my tone of voice. I need to be happier. I need to use better treats. I have liverwurst in my pocket if I need it, but right now I'm gonna stick with the chicken. So we're gonna take another stroll back. Good boy, Jack. Yes, wait. Yes, good boy, wait. Okay, so we're gonna take another little stroll. I'm going to get my treats ready. Remember, they're not bribes, they are motivation. And when he figures out, oh, when I do what she asks, I get paid for it and I get paid well for it, it's more worth his while to do what I'm asking him to do as opposed to, to looking at the trucks or the other things that are around here. Ready, Jack? Okay. Good boy. So he's looking at me. I'll click and treat. Jack. Nice. No pulling on the leash. I like that. Good boy, Jack. Good boy. Jack, sit. Good boy. So the sit's a really nice command. He does not need a click and a treat every time. The sit is now on what's called variable reinforcement. So every once in a while, every third, I will reinforce him for that. If people were to walk past us or something, uh, some very big distraction came by, I would definitely click and treat him for that. Jack, lie. He's a little slow, what'd you say? Good boy. So we're still working on that one. I'm going to click and treat him. I'd like it to be faster. Uh -uh. I definitely don't want him to lick that up off the ground. Lie. Good boy. So that was a double command. I did the hand and the verbal. Doesn't really matter. I'm just trying to proof him a little bit so that it's more on the verbal. Good boy. Let's walk. Good boy. Jack. Jack, touch. Yes. Good boy. Jack, touch. Yes. So there's a good example of showing that touch command that we were working with. Sit. I'll show you and remind you how we started. So we have a little more leash. Jack, touch. Good boy. Touch. Good boy. So again, once he's touching really nicely, check. A nice test is, yes, really jump for it. Touch. Yes, good boy. Now that's the way I like to use that in heel having him walk nicely and targeting my left hand because I do like him on my left. So that's, that is what the touch looks like. Oh, you're tired? Good boy. Now we can use it to help him get back in position. Jack, touch. Good boy. Sit. Yes, good boy. It's still all on the touch command. And then as we walk, Jack, touch. Touch, yes. Jack. Touch. Yes, good boy. Jack, touch. Yes, good boy. Now, if I click and treat, let me ask him to lie down. Jack, lie. Good boy. So we had a little touch in there too. If you get in the habit of clicking and treating or treating every time the dog sits, every time the dog lies down, every time he touches, you actually become very boring. Think of a Coke machine. You're only going to put your money in a Coke machine when you want to get the soda out. You need to think more like a Las Vegas slot machine when you're dog training. Once you feel like your dog has a basic understanding, 80% of the time the dog will perform the behaviors, then you need to change to variable reinforcement, which is what I'm doing. I asked him to touch. He did not get a click and treat. I asked him to touch again. He did not get a click and treat the third time he did. And he gets a little more exuberant each time I ask because he's thinking, is it this one? Is it this time? that I'll get the reinforcement. Good boy. Lie. Uh, not today. Hand signal's always strongest because we've taught that with the lure reward method. Good boy. Yes. All right. <laughs> sit. Jack, sit. Good boy. Wait. Give the command for wait, and then release your dog through the door. Jack, release. Good boy. That's great impulse control. It's good safety. It's good manners. You can use that in your house, on doors, up and down your stairs, in and out of stores. Okay, so it's also nice to be sure. I'm going to get out my clicker just in case I need it, because he's still learning. And to be able to have him... Jack, sit. Now this is a very distracting area. Sit. Good boy. So that your dog can sit, 
why you look at different things on the shelf, handle things. Good boy. It's a, it's a practical form of a sit-stay. Now, if he lies down, again, I don't mind that that's, that may help out his leg a little bit. And it's just, again, good impulse control that he can do that. Good boy. What do you think? Good job. Oop. Leave it. Good boy. Leave it. So there's a good place to use leave it. Leave it. I don't want him picking up these things that I just dropped. Good dog. So we'll do that. Come back. So in the house, we worked on a lot of leave it's. And now that I've done that, I'm going to do it again for you. <coughs> Jack, leave it. So I can tell him before, and I can also tell him after. Leave it. I'm going to wait till he looks back at me. Good boy. And I'm going to treat him with something better, hopefully, than what I've dropped. Good boy. And if you were looking at something on the shelf and it accidentally fell, leave it. Good boy. You don't want your dog picking up random things. Leave it while you're out shopping. And for this purpose, lie. And I'm going to tell him to stay. Now his stay isn't perfected, but it should be fine in this situation. Good boy. So if I had to pick something up, his down stay right now is about three, a, a three minutes in distracting environments, but I still have to reinforce him with the treats. And remember, it's, uh, it's paying him to stay there, right? There's people that he's looking at. There are all sorts of smells and sights and sounds in here that are very interesting to him. And in order to be a good trainer, I need to motivate him with something better than everything else that he has to look at. Jack, leave it. Leave it. Good boy. Lie. So I'm not going to reinforce that because I had to pull him away from it. Leave it. I'm sorry. Lie. Good boy. Got my commands mixed up, but he did it anyway. Good boy. Leave it. Good boy. He never gets what you've asked him to leave. That's the way we teach the leave a command. It comes from my service dog training days. Good boy. When um, if somebody dropped pills on the floor, you didn't want the service dog to race and get the pills. So a leave it, the way I teach it is he never gets what I've asked him to leave. Stay. We'll give him a little bit of a leave it. Good boy. So he still needs to get paid for that. Good boy. Good boy. Leave it. Good boy. Stay. So we'll drop something again. I'm just going to move it. Good boy. So when you're dropping things, there's motion. Leave it. Good boy. And there's sound involved. Good boy. And he's doing really well with that. Good boy. Leave it. Okay, so while he's in a stay, I'm going to get the... Now this is kind of a fun trick. The teacher dog. It's the Staples Easy Button. It's not too difficult to that teach. Was easy. Oops, not too difficult to teach. That was easy. Oh, I keep touching it. <laughs> so I'm going to first release him from the stay. Release. And he doesn't need to jump up when I release him because, hey, if I stay down here, maybe some more things will come my way. So I'm going to kind of encourage him a little bit. Okay, Jack, release. Good boy. He's still learning this easy button, and this is called the generalization process. He's done it in many rooms around my house, and now we're going to um, have him start to touch it here. It's not on command, so I'm not going to say anything. He has, he has to compete, or I'm competing, <laughs> with everything on the shelves and whatever that good smell is right there. Leave it. Good boy. So we'll go back to the leave it. Good boy. As long as, good boy. That was easy. Good boy. So we'll move it a little bit. That was easy. Good boy. So that's a trick. 
my goal would be to jack sit. <laughs> Keep stretching funny, sit. Good boy. So my goal would be to put this trick on a command where the word would be that. So I could say to him, Jack, how is that? And he would touch the button when he heard the word that. So anytime you're te teaching tricks, be as creative as you can because they can be a, a lot of fun. Everybody likes to show off their dog's tricks. Good boy. All right, so I'm gonna take the battery back out of here so we don't have to listen to it. Okay, so we've taken our field trip now to downtown Keene. We're gonna work all the same behaviors with Jack, the sit, the lie down, the stay, the wait, the walking next to me, the leave it if we have to, to again show how just a few basic commands can really help your dog be a better citizen, go any place with you and be well behaved. Now remember, his heel is not perfect. He is wearing his gentle leader and that's great because without it I would be, literally be dragged down the street. He's very strong and um, he hasn't learned a total heel, which in my opinion would be walking next to me, no gentle leader, but again, the family's not interested in needing that and that's fine with me. There's a lot of other things we can train him. So we're gonna take a stroll down. You're gonna watch me do some body blocking and in order to maintain the control of him, I may ask him to sit fairly frequently because that will also help him stay focused. There's a lot more distractions down here than there was in the store we were at. Okay, Jack, you ready? Sit. So I'm gonna body block him to help him get up. Jack, sit. Sit. Yes, good boy. Up, oh, sit. Good boy. And you can tell just, if you just watch Jack, all the looking around he's doing, he's gotta check everything out. Okay, let's walk. Good boy. Give him some information right away. Jack. Jack. Good boy. If he gets too far in front, I body block him back and I ask him to wait. Come on, Jack. Now Jack avoids the body block a little bit. Wait. Good boy. Jack, touch. Touch. <laughs> so he didn't touch, but he came around a little bit. Wasn't to my satisfaction, so I did not click and treat that. Jack, sit. Sit. Good job. So I'm going to click and treat because he's looking at these people to my left and I don't want him to start barking and I don't want to test him to see, oh, is he going to start barking? Good boy. Good boy. So we'll see if we can get that touch going a little bit better with him. Jack. Touch. Okay, so the other thing I've noticed is I like to ask myself, what's the dog telling me by his behavior? And what he's telling me is that the motivation I'm using isn't enough. So I'm gonna switch and pull out the gooey liverwurst and we'll try this again. So bring him back, swing him around, sit. Good boy. So he's thinking about barking at the truck. Good boy, sit. Jack, sit. Good dog. All right, adjust my leash. Okay, Jack, touch. Yes, better. Jack, touch. Yes, there it is. Look, and he's looking at me nicely. Good boy. Now you can use this. Jack, touch. Touch. Yeah. So not quite. I'll try again. Jack. Jack. Yes. Good boy. So when he looks up and he's touching, Jack, touch. Yes. Then. He will get out of my way. Come on, let's try that again. Good boy, Jack. Jack, touch. Yes, good boy. Jack, touch. Yes, good boy. I like the way he looks up. Jack, touch. Yes. To change his direction. I don't want to be pulling on him all the time. Sit. Sit. Good. So I didn't pat him and I didn't push with my whole hand. What I did is I just put my finger on his butt to help him focus just a little bit. Good boy. Jack touch. Yes. Jack touch. Hey, wait. Good boy. Good boy. Wait. Good boy. Good. So I like that body block that turns into a sit. Jack, touch. Good boy. Jack. That's a good boy. Yay, there you are. Good.
good boy. Okay. Jack, good boy. Good boy, Jack. Jack, yes, good boy. Good boy. Jack, here. Yes, good boy. And we'll do another sit. Jack, sit. So again, straight finger, sit. Good boy. Jack, lie. <coughs> so you can tell he's not completely with me. Lie. So I'm going to help him out. Move up. Jack, sit. Sit. Good boy. Lie. Lie. Good boy. So I did use a lure on that. This is tough. The trucks are really a distraction. Good boy. Stay. You really, when you're doing this, you cannot take your eyes off the dog. So I need to know what he's doing all the time. I've asked him to stay. If I start looking around, t taking my attention someplace else, then I'll be in a situation where he might get up and then the stay has been lost. The stay is only effective if you work within your dog's ability level and he learns to stay there successfully and not have to be repositioned all the time. So I'll give him another reinforcement. Good boy. He's doing really well. It's wet, but that doesn't seem to bother him as much as it would some other dogs. Good boy. You can see him air scenting a little bit to see what else is happening. That's what that's called. I'm going to give him one more reinforcement, and then I'm going to count to four. One, two, three, four. And now I will release him. Release. Good boy. You don't want the treat to be the predictor that the exercise is over. So give your dog the last reinforcement and then release them from that. Good boy. Good boy. All right. All right. So on today's episode of Doggy Dilemmas, I hope you were able to see how teaching your dog some very basic commands, sit, stay, down, leave it, Using proper equipment like a gentle leader, sensation harness will really help your dog be a better citizen, be well behaved, and able to go out and travel with you wherever you wish to go. So thanks for tuning in to today's episode, and I look forward to seeing you next week. If you have a doggy dilemma, Denise can help. Visit www.denisemazzola.com for more information. Denise Mazzola is a certified professional dog trainer tested through the Association of Pet Dog Trainers. The association requires recertification every three years with a minimum of 30 hours of continuing education. She has been training dogs and working with families for over 20 years.